Hey guys, um, I'm going to do a recent pickups video today because uh, I've not done one for a while and I have been picking up quite a lot of stuff but I've just been so busy and exhausted uh, after work. Um, the only free time that I've had really, I've I've kind of, you know, I have to spend time with my daughter and my, my family and doing the things that I need to do, just regular things, shopping, going out, doing different chores and whatever. Um, I've really just been putting into Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag, um, and because uh, I've, I've been, I've I'm absolutely loving the game. So I'm just you know anything, any time that I've got to myself where I, I can get a bit of time to rest. I've just not got the energy to make the video, but um, I have been, picked up a lot of stuff. So I'll get this video up so you guys can uh, catch up on what I've been buying. Um, so first of all, I'll show you the the non-video game but video game related items that I picked up. Now you've probably seen in my last video which would have been like a capture card test. I did go ahead and pick up the uh, the Elgato game capture HD uh, capture card record whatever you want to call it and uh, yeah so to bear with me while I'm getting used to that I'll obviously need time to adjust and learn, learn what the settings are and how to get the best out of it but um, hopefully this is the beginning of trying to get more of those videos that I did promise a lot of the early subscribers that I would I really want to do in the future like reviews or what crews just seem like they're gonna take too long but I might do like sp specific uh, parts to games like for example in let's just say off the top of my head Assassin's Creed Black Flag a lot of people are kinda having a bit of a problem with how to find the white whale that would be like those kind of things I could do videos based on that. Um, at the moment I've not got the, the mic to talk over it. I'm not sure if my Tuttle Beach headset is going to work with it. So um, I'll look into that and figure out if I can do anything with that. But um, for this now it will just be actual gameplay. But I'll, I'll put up some videos of some obscure games and stuff. Hopefully to let people see actual gameplay of uh, just things that they've probably never heard of and might interest them a bit. So yeah, um, one second. <sighs> Oh shit, just dropped something. So I picked that up um, off eBay. There it is there. It's really, really good. Really small, doesn't take up a lot of room like a lot of the other capture cards. Um, decided to go with this one after reading a lot of reviews. It seems to be the one most people are um, going with these days. Uh, and it was about £110, which in dollars I'm guessing is probably a little bit more than what 110 is. Probably just off, just guessing, probably about £140, £150. Um, now I showed you guys that I picked up. Uh, I did an unboxing for this, the colourful but not so colourful hand grip. Um, well, whilst I actually like it, um, it feels like you have to stretch a bit too much for the top buttons. So I did order something else. Um, another one of these little PS Vita um, grips and I actually really like this one it just fits perfect for my hand and uh, it's really good so there's just a couple of little Vita accessories that you can get to make holding the Vita and playing games uh, more comfortable and if you look on uh, eBay you'll, you'll find these everywhere and it seems to be these kind of two designs that are most uh, I'd advertise there and I'd probably say go with this one it's a lot more comfy to hold so that was the two the two items that I've picked up that are kind of related to video games so I'll show them in this but they aren't actual video games um, so the let's start with uh, an eBay lot that I got a bunch of uh, GameCube games uh, got Die Hard which I've got no interest in playing um, Medal of Honor no interest in playing uh, gun uh, shoot, looks quite cool I might give that a try um, I've never really wanted to go out and buy it but I've always been kind of you know a bit uh, curious about how good the game is and the main reason I picked up this bundle of games Digimon uh, Rumble Arena 2 this is actually quite a rare game and it holds a lot of value it's, it's about the same price as any new game 40 to 50 pound um, so it does hold its value quite well and uh, I got this lot of games for £12, so really, I was basically just happy to pay that for uh, this game alone, you know. Um, so, 
yeah, I'm very happy with that. I've been playing it quite a lot. Uh, I used it as the capture card uh, test because I've been, you know, just messing around with it. And uh, I wanted to try out the GameCube because the GameCube is one of my favourite systems. So it's a good little bundle to bulk up the GameCube collection and at the same time get a very rare game and one that I have uh, been curious to play for a little while now. So I'll set them aside. Uh, next up is, I guess we can go with, go with the game I got on Amazon um, on the on the sales January sales, Aquatine Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro Am. Um, it's still sealed, uh, brand new. Got it for uh, I think one pound and one pound shipping, so two pound, really cheap. Uh, I don't know if you can see any of the actual gameplay there but it just looks I remember I, I actually when I saw the cover there I, I instantly thought oh, it was some sort of Space Invaders um, clone or some sort of Space Invaders um, like Pac-Man HD kind of remix game something like that and I clicked on it and then I saw a couple of screenshots on Amazon and I remembered uh, I remembered actually looking at this game a lot on YouTube um, a while back when I was searching PS2 hidden gems and it just looks, it, it reminds me of The Breakfast Club, that cartoon, you know, the, the fries and everything. But um, it looks so strange and different and just something that I might, you know, uh, really get a kick out of. So I picked it up and I'll probably uh, have, have a little go of that. Uh, next up, picked up uh, two Sega Mega Drive uh, games, or Sega Genesis. Picked up uh, Death Jewel. And picked up a uh, Zool. Um, why did I pick this one up? Mm, well, I was looking into it a little bit. I, I remember seeing it in Pete Dawes' video, I think, a, a while back. And um, I, I've always kind of had it at the back of my mind as a platform I'd quite like to try out. And I uh, saw it for a for a good price, so I picked that up. And Death Jewel, I picked up mainly just because the cover is so cool. You've got like a robot and a monster, alien monster, just zapping each other there and uh, I watched a classic game rooms uh, review of this and uh, yeah they're uh, boxed and complete we've got the old stick, Sega store sticker there Azul boxed and complete as well so yeah um, really excited to try this one out um, this one uh, really happy to give that a shot as well but uh, that kind of cover, I, I miss those covers. And the reason why I picked this up, just because of the cover, and I never tell anyone to do that, but back uh, when I was younger, you know, that, that was how I chose my games. I went into a shop, and if I saw a cover like that, that's the game I said, Mum, I want that game. And, because uh, I was only allowed, like, one game, you know, every, like, four months or something, you know, something like that. Well, maybe not that long. But every three months or something, you know, you go in and you get, like, a game or two. Uh... But there was no like, there was no way for me to go on the internet and just search reviews and stuff or, or there was magazines but I just kind of didn't really do that when I was a kid and there was just really no way for me to know what was good other than what my friends were playing and said or what I kind of saw in the shop and liked the look of. So a lot of the time you know you'd go in when you're younger and just uh you pick games up based on just whatever the cover looked like and it's really fun to do that and then be kind of either surprised or really let down uh, obviously being surprised is much better so uh, I hope I get a good surprise with this game and Zool I know I like that because I love platformers like that the old classic ones uh, next up PlayStation 3 game Africa uh, I got this for four pound and anyone who knows about this game knows that that's a really good deal. It's it's a Japanese only game, I think, or Asia only. Um, so it is in Japanese, uh, but I'm guessing it won't be too hard to navigate through the menus and just get into the game. It's basically like you're on a safari and you sneak up and get good shots of animals and stuff. But it does command, uh, when I say a high price it's just it it doesn't drop in price basically and it's just the price of a brand new PlayStation game but um everybody uh this everybody who if if you if you search for I don't want to say rare because 
PlayStation 3 games, not really rare, they're mass produced, but it's one of the games that a lot of people, whenever you search for rare PlayStation 3 games, this will come up along with like Train Simulator, which I've been trying to find, uh, no, Rail Fan or Rail Simulator, which I've been trying to find for a while as well, but I can't find it, but for £4 I was so happy just to pick that up, because uh, I've been wanting to get it and try it out for a while now. For the DS, I got um, Contact, and although it doesn't actually play like it, um, it reminds me a lot of Earthbound. Um, I really, really love this game. It's just so, so cool. Please search some gameplay for this. It's got a really, really unique feel to it. It's a quirky little title, and I really love the art direction in it, and I really love the, the game. It's just everything about it's really good. It's a really underrated hidden gem for the DS. It's Contact. And finally, I picked up a game from my childhood, which is one of my favourite memories, and that is Dragon Ball Z Final Bout. Um, these, this isn't the price I paid for it, I paid £5 for it. Um, it's uh, complete and in great condition, and um, I just remember playing this game with uh, a friend of mine. Um, we had the the three Dragon Ball Z games, we had Ultimate 22 I think it was, and we had one called something Legend and Final Bout, and Legend and, Legend and Final Bout used to just play religiously, we, I used to go around his house so much. I had Legend and uh, Final Bout and he had Ultimate 22, so we'd go around to his house all the time, you know, because the way his room was set up so it was much more comfy and we'd all just kind of sit down there and play it so much, and it's... It doesn't hold up very well. This one is quite floaty and slow, uh, but just to have it again, and I, I definitely want to put up some gameplay so you guys can see it because it's it's one of my favourite covers as well. I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, and uh, I think I can prove that right now, actually. Uh, so hold on a second. So... I'll show you what I mean by being a Dragon Ball Z fan, okay? I have literally got... <laughs> I've literally got <laughs> an entire collection of, um... Dragon Ball Z stuff. Um, it was probably along with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's probably the thing that's been the big one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, things I've been addicted to in my life. And um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Vegeta is my favorite, but um, I just absolutely loved this cover because remember at the time when this game was uh, and. On another thing as well, this is the PAL version, so it's going to be so much fucking easier for me because we had the the three games we had were all in Japanese. We we there was a shop uh, here in a <coughs> excuse me in Glasgow called G Force, and they basically get tons of import stuff, and they always have done. But back then, you know, it was really kind of strange and never really heard of Japanese imports and that but we just couldn't find any Dragon Ball Z games anywhere and we went in that shop and just saw these and we got them and it was hard to navigate the menus and stuff but we f I found a way to, and I knew exactly what every button meant on Legend because I was so addicted to Legend but um yeah it was so uh strange because back then at the time uh the, sh the Cartoon Network was where I was watching Dragon Ball Z and um they were only showing up to, I'm sure it was out by then, obviously, but um, I, I never knew it, and I never knew how to check on the internet for it and stuff like that, you know, I was not really good with technology until <laughs> quite recently, really. but um, I n I've never seen Goku in this blue outfit, and I was like, maybe they just done something different to match like the cover of the, the game, make it look a bit different, or maybe in J Japan, Goku wears blue, you know, I was like so confused. And when you played these three games and there was characters like the Super Saiyan 4 characters or even, you know, like like Cell or, you know, Majin Buu and stuff, you know, we were like so like, what the fuck? Who is this? Oh, I really want to... Because basically it got up to like the end of the, the Namek and Frieza sagas and uh, actually no, it got up to the, the Trunks saga where Trunks uh, came down and got... Um, 
Freezer when he came back to Earth and stuff. And um, it, it got up to the end of that trunk saga where Goku meets him for the first time, and it basically went for about two, three years. It basically replayed the entire Dragon Ball Z series over and over again every day. Um, up until that point and then keep resetting and I was so desperate for new episodes and when they finally came obviously and uh, I kept watching in the future we eventually found out who and why it was like that so yeah it's just such a great memory it's one of my favourite game covers of all time because it's Dragon Ball Z and I love the blue and the way it looks and I just loved it at the time and it's one of my best memories playing games with friends as well which is another quite uh, important thing but yeah, uh, thanks for watching guys, that's everything I've picked up recently, um, well there's actually two other games but um, I, I, they're, they're in the mail on the way but I just wanted to get this video out of the way so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.